pleasure of presenting Dr. Panos T. Papas, the inventor of the Papimi, and he's going to talk about another invention of his, the Tesla, or the lightning arresting system that keeps lightning from striking oil tankers out on the ocean or buildings that have microwave antennas on them. Uh, it's a very fascinating product. It's been on the market for about 20 years. Panos has donated the proceeds of this patent uh, to a charitable cause. And in the history of the Tesla, he has a zero failure rate. No ship or building outfitted with a Tesla has ever been struck by lightning. We're now starting a push in the United States to install them in golf courses where people have sometimes been fatally struck by lightning. So with that uh, to begin us, please help me welcome Dr. Pappas. Talk to you, I came all the way from my home, Athens, Greece, mainly for this presentation. Zach uh, has talked to you about, as you say, details, and uh, I will, in a certain extent, have to repeat in more details to you. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to say that Papimi relates to my first experience with like since the beginning of 80, early 80s, when I had finished my PhD, I decided uh, to do lightning systems. Actually, we have, uh, you may see, can somebody bring that lightning, the lightning arrestor we have in... Uh, the from the airport? Yeah, the one you got from the airport. Right. Did that right yes. last night? Yeah. I'll show you what was my first uh, uh, patent, which back the second patent, the series of patents uh, associated with these devices. So I was uh, involved, and I would say lightning is not taught in every university. Probably it's one university out of a hundred that they teach the subject. I don't know why, but this is the case. Okay, this is my first patent that uh, brought Papimi into existence. This goes on, on a pole, goes to a high, really high. And here is not just a passive uh, lightning rod, you see here, it cuts lightning, but also there is a mechanism here that before trying to cut lightning, eliminates lightning. So before lightning hits here, there is no lightning as much like around. If it fails to eliminate lightning, then it catches through here. I will tell you right now, this kind of thing I'm holding in my hands, it protects uh, petroleum storages, uh, military explosives, uh, all sorts of, sorts of things that are really, really very dangerous, and it has never failed. Recently, it was uh, approved by NATO bases to protect uh, the military equipment there. Now, once this fails, <coughs> do what it's supposed to do, it's billion of dollars damages and really ability. Okay, it was, and this is in the production. It's my first partner in production, which backed up uh, the papier. So it was my study to produce this pattern here that made me read in the literature <coughs> that uh, if lightning strikes near somebody, then there will be medical effects recorded by the engineers of lightning, not by the medical people. <coughs> so I didn't know what it was. And <coughs> briefly, I would say I came across uh, the Lakovsky device to hear about it twice. We hear about the Rife device down in uh, San Diego. Um, to hear about the Priore device. So there were a number of devices in the same category. I didn't know what it was in common that these electrical devices produced the uh, effects. Then I decided to come in California, that's my first night to visit uh, and to know the research of uh, Royal Rife down in San Diego in uh, Pepper Street. 
where uh, I founded his house and unfortunately was praying. Now he's not alive, still alive. To find in detail uh, what he was doing, I'm telling you, it's completely different what you read in a book describing those things and what you see with your own eyes. <laughs> Anyhow, I would say that uh, there were many references in medical, in uh, engineer's book about lightning. And uh, I would say very briefly, serious connections of uh, lightning with biology and medicine, which standard science does not acknowledge. In 1956, Nobel Prize was given to Miller because he synthesized proteins, synthesized, listen to the word, synthesized, but made big molecules with energy, but not any kind of energy, with sparks. He had to, to put in a glass container the ingredients, the inorganic ingredients, and to spark them. And when he sparked them, he noticed that uh, for the first time in the human history, that proteins, which is the basic uh, organic ingredient for living matter, was formed out of uh, non-inorganic material. Now, proteins were formed in our bodies, and uh, little uh, primitive organisms are composed of proteins, and they reproduce proteins. Then the question was how the first proteins were created. Now we know they are created not under the sun, not under the heat, but under sparking conditions. And particularly biology has adopted the hypothesis that proteins and life involved from the proteins were formed due to lightning in the early atmosphere of the, of the planet. So this is a very serious uh, hypothesis which has not been exploited by science. Now, sparking and lightning, it's a severe pulse. What is a pulse? It's something that does not exist, an electrical field does not exist, all suddenly comes up. It comes up, comes up in a very short duration and the power is tremendous. Lightning has a tremendous power it lasts very, a very, very short time, like not, nothing else. And also, when one is producing uh, lightning sparks, during the discharge, the power is tremendous because all the energy released after being stored in a container in a very short time. So it is a release, a very fast release of energy in a very short time, as Chuck mentioned. What is special about, I would like to make it plain, what is special, there's a number of certain things that are special, and they are known since 5,000 years, but humanity doesn't pay so much attention, they are very much known. It's the hammer principle. I have a nail, I put the hammer over the nail, not much <coughs> happens. However, if I raise the hammer and drop it on the nail, then there's a big difference. The nail is going to penetrate into the wood, whatever is under there, and will create an effect that probably a hundred years will not create that effect. And this will be only a fraction of a second. So it's much better to store the force and release the force all at once. Store and release. And you have to be pulsed or a hammer type of thing. Now, Bakim is doing exactly this that Chuck explained. Stores energy and releases the energy all suddenly. It does exactly the hammer principle. Makes things to penetrate, makes matter to penetrate into other matter. Here is the cell. This circle, I represent a cell. A cell uh, is like an egg. It has poruses, little holes. Little holes around the membrane. 